They think inflation is the primary concern. They explicitly recognize that there's going to need to be increases in unemployment to contain uh, inflation. That's former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers enjoying a tropical paradise as he argues that more Americans need to lose their livelihoods in order to tackle inflation. Let's hear what this clown has to say. As the salience of labor market developments as a kind of super core measure of inflation. They're showing awareness of the fact that the neutral interest rate is a real interest rate concept rather than a uh, nominal uh, interest rate uh, concept. They're recognizing that the trade off is not between unemployment and inflation, but between unemployment and the level of entrenched uh, in uh, inflation. So if you pay close attention to what Summers is saying there, he's giving the Fed kudos for continuing to have a very aggressive approach in increasing interest rates, which of course makes it far more expensive to borrow in an effort to tackle inflation. Now, when it becomes more expensive for businesses to borrow, for instance, they end up laying off workers, it increases unemployment. He knows that and he seems to be celebrating that because, and this is an important point to mention, okay? When he says that he's concerned about inflation, when the wealthy, when those sitting in their tropical paradises talk about how we need to tackle inflation, they're not talking about tackling the high cost of necessary items we rely on every day, like food prices. What they're talking about is the inflation related to the workforce because we're in a tight labor market and he no like that, okay? So they don't like the fact that workers are getting paid more. They don't like the fact that workers are organizing and demanding better pay and better working conditions. They essentially want to use the method of coercion to either force people to stay at their jobs and deal with whatever their you know management is willing to pay them. Um, and, and the way to do that is to do away with the tight labor market. I have more on this in a moment, including his ridiculous op-ed. But before I get to that, Jink. Yeah, so look, these guys speak a different language and they feel like they could speak openly because they're speaking in corporate business lingo and they think the average person doesn't understand it. So they could just say anything they want, like, hey, we'd love to drive longer term unemployment and make sure that millions of more people are suffering without jobs. But they feel like if they put it in business lingo, we're not gonna hear it or understand it. Well, good news, I'm bilingual. I went to the top business school in the world. I run a business, so you're not gonna get anything past this. So I understand what you're saying. You're saying that you think that the interest rates should be you know, some long-term reasonable number and not zero. Okay, I might agree with that, by the way, uh, but that then leads to more unemployment. And I would look at that and go, hey, we should have a debate around that because that's gonna cause a lot of people pain. He seems to celebrate it. He says over and over again, whether it's the video or the op-ed about how great long-term unemployment is. And that's because these guys only look at it from a corporate perspective. They genuinely believe what they're saying. and. But they don't even consider the workers. They just think like, well, if corporations are doing better, well, you lowly workers will eventually do better too. But if you were had enough wisdom, you would know that, that we're firing you for your own sake. No, you're just doing it because you don't get it. You think your, your perspective is the only correct perspective. No, your perspective is of the wealthy and the powerful, and you don't care about the rest of us at all. 100%. And look, there are potential upsides to higher interest rates. So for instance, the the super low near zero or even in some cases below zero interest rates in other countries like Japan for a long time had below zero interest rates, which meant like you would get like almost paid to borrow money if you were a corporation, right? That leads to certain bubbles in you know assets, whether you're talking about the stock market or in our case, more specifically, when it comes to the housing market, right? You'll have uh, private equity firms buy up all of these single family homes that typically would be purchased as like starter homes by uh, families because it's so cheap to borrow, why not? So I, I think it is a good debate, you're right about that, Cenk. Uh, there's also a benefit in you know getting some 
interest in your savings account, for instance. So if you've been saving money slowly but surely, make sure that you're doing your research and you find a good bank that offers a decent interest rate. So you're getting an interest rate on that on that savings account. But putting that aside, what I find so brazen about all of this is how he's like giddy about unemployment while he's like sitting in Oahu enjoying like a freaking pina colada. I don't know if he's actually in Oahu, it just kind of looks like it. And it's just like this carelessness, lack of compassion for what how how what he's advocating for is gonna cause a lot of misery in people's lives. And he certainly gets more detailed about how he loves the misery in his op-ed for the Washington Post. Before I give you some details on that, do you wanna to respond to what I said, Jenk? Yeah, no, I, we're in agreement here. Uh, the the fact that he's doing it from this location, I know he's being interviewed for a show, but giddily uh, telling people that we should fire more of you. Uh, well, you seem to have the most luxurious background in the world, doesn't help with your messaging. But Anna, that goes to the point of they really don't get it. They think they don't care. That, yeah, they think they're above the law. They think they're immune. They think it's perfectly normal to play with all of our lives, and they genuinely believe that they're doing it for our own good. Absolutely. So let's get to his op, his latest op-ed in the Washington Post, because I think there are a few nuggets there. They make it abundantly clear that he is in favor of people losing their livelihoods just to essentially coerce workers to deal with whatever low wages their employers want to pay them. He says, quote, historical experience as encapsulated in the proposition known as the SAM rule demonstrates that whenever US unemployment rises by more than half a percent within a year, it goes on to rise by 2%. So he you know, expects a recession in 2023. So if a recession comes, it is very likely to lift unemployment to the 6% range. That is his prediction. But he does not see this as a bad thing at all. He sees it as a good thing. He says, quote, it is very unlikely that we will have a recession so severe as to drive the underlying inflation rate below the 2% target. Hence, overshooting on inflation, meaning increasing interest rates too much. Um, is not the primary risk and the Fed is right to emphasize its inflation objective going forward. So the Fed continues to raise interest rates and people thought that at this point, Jerome Powell, who's the head of the Federal Reserve would slow things down. But it's clear that he's gonna keep going. There has been a transitory, get a load of this, a transitory element in inflation's recent deterioration caused by bottlenecks in sectors such as used cars. As these bottlenecks ease, the prices return to normal. There will be a transitory deflationary impact hitting these statistics. This must not be confused with enduring resolution of the inflation problem. What he's saying there is, listen, once the supply chain issues get sorted out, we shouldn't be under the impression that the Federal Reserve should stop raising interest rates. They should keep going. So to me, that's what makes it clear that this is about the labor market. This is about the wage inflation that executives at corporations have been complaining about. It's not about the inflation associated with products that you and I need every day just to live. It's just about how they don't wanna have to pay workers more for the work that they do, that's it. Yeah, so look, he doesn't want interest rates to be um, Sky high, he says, I'm calling for moderation. And I don't think they should be near zero either. But at the same time, he does say that we should have a permanent state of, you know, employment, unemployment that is clearly and perhaps significantly higher than it is today. So, and he thinks that that leads to a balancing of inflation and unemployment issues. I don't necessarily agree with that. And I think callously talking about, trying to get more people fired and keep their wages as low as possible. And then claiming while you're sipping on your pina colada that you're doing it for their own benefit is classic neoliberalism. Mm -hmm. You people don't know what's good for you. We're doing trickle down economics here. We will of course hoard all of the cash and goodies for ourselves and we will fire some of you and make it permanent. But don't worry, it's all for your own good. Is it Larry? Or is it that you've never actually inspected your own views? And that if you broke down any of your views, you would realize that they are geared 
towards extreme self benefit and not the benefit of the population at large. And again, Anna, he hides or it's both true that he means it and he's hiding his bad intent mm -hmm. in some proposals because he then comes around and this is a little bit neoliberal too. And he says, well, look, look, we should have a little bit higher benefits too. So we should increase unemployment benefits because we're gonna make more people unemployed. <laughs> okay, so you could, you know, that cuts both ways, right? They uh, you can give him credit for honesty on that in a sense, but um, and he's preparing because well, he's like, look, we're gonna make sure more people don't have jobs. And he did make an argument for child tax credit. Now, is that going to, is he gonna push for that? Probably never, no. No. Uh, instead, he also talked about how we gotta make sure that we take care of the oil companies and, and beloved Joe Manchin. Oh, yes. oh, there we go. I gotta, I gotta give you that line because it, I mean, he gives the whole game away. Let's go to graphic six here because in the same paragraph where he mentions the child tax credits, which by the way, if I'm not mistaken, you only get the child tax credits if you file tax returns, meaning when you have a job, correct? Uh, you know, I don't know the details of that one. Anna. Okay, uh, I, de I definitely do. And if the child tax credits are carried out the way they were uh, when we had them temporarily under the Biden administration, they base it on your tax return. So if you're unemployed- well, it's a tax credit. So you, exactly. you have to have taxes to get credited for exactly. sure. Exactly, yeah, yeah, so he's a liar. He doesn't actually care about the child tax credit at all because it's not going to benefit people who are unemployed. And let's go to graphic six here where in the same paragraph he writes, now is the time to put in place carefully targeted measures to pull forward federal spending on maintenance and replacement cycles to periods when overall demand is soft. Now, Cenk, I didn't go to a fancy business school. So maybe my interpretation of that sentence is incorrect. But I read that as bailouts for corporations that might struggle in a downturn. <laughs> well, so he would probably add in there, well, what I said unemployment benefits and child tax credit. So I'm saying bailouts for everybody. But is it, <laughs> because is that how it really works? We had the child tax credit for I think about one year, right? Uh, every time the corporations need help, they get trillions of dollars in help from the Federal Reserve and, and obviously backed up by the United States government. And by the way, Larry Summers not only is uh, part of the people who say and have said throughout their entire careers that those companies should be helped. But he was one of the top architects under the Obama administration for doing the bank bailouts where they gave infinite money to the worst business people in the history of the world. That caused one of the greatest economic crashes in world history. And he bailed them all out because in his worldview, if you're helping the very wealthiest people in the world, you're definitely doing the right economic policy. And eventually it'll get down to the unwashed masses. <laughs> I do declare Jeeves another pina colada, would you? Thanks for watching the Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.